Folks, you're watching the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. Here are some of the live questions coming in. First up from D. Jonathan Miller. What's the word on the Dolphins and our coach? I knew we'd have some Chris Richard questions. That does not surprise me at all. The Dolphins are strongly considering Chris Richard, but they also like Brian Flores. And by the way, they have yet to interview Darren Ritchie, their special teams guy. So the Dolphins have not yet made a decision. They'll end up making one in the near future. I think they are the only team that hasn't really locked into a guy. I think the Bengals kind of have because they're letting some of their assistants go. My money's on Eric Bieniemy there. So D, so Jonathan Miller, there is a real chance there, but we don't quite know yet what's going to happen on that end. But I do think there's a strong chance that Chris Richard leaves something. But for my, but as of right now, nobody knows. All right, Johnny Aguirre says, does Lil Jordan Humphrey draft Lil Jordan Humphrey to replace Cole Beasley? Sign me up. I don't know if he's a round three or a round four guy yet from, from the NFL's perspective, but I love it. He is the, what exactly I think the Cowboys need at the slot position. A guy that can handle that role and, by the way, return kicks and punts as well. So sign me up for little Jordan. Round three, round four. I love the idea. Saeed says, what do you think of Lance Lenore? Could he be a hidden gem? Had some great cutters in the preseason. I'm not in love with Lance Lenore because every time I watch him play, it's mostly on returns, and he sucks on returns. All he does is fumble. I don't want him back there. He did make some nice grabs in week four of the preseason. I've just never really bought into Lance Lenore as the future at the slot receiver. If Beasley can't play, maybe he does end up getting a bigger role. Maybe he does shine. I think you can. I think he can have success in the NFL, but I don't think he'll end up being that undrafted guy like Cole Beasley was for the Cowboys. All right, next up from AJ Deloach says, hashtag who, use hashtag Cowboys guy. Who do you feel is the impact player to look forward to on defense against the Rams, and how do you feel they should play Todd Gurley? Their game plan is going to be stopping Gurley. They will make Jared Goff beat them. As for the impact player on defense against Rams, I think you mean from the Cowboys perspective, so I'll throw out Demarcus Lawrence. If you mean the Rams perspective, it's obviously Aaron Donald. All right, Maurice Jones David Irving question mark. I assume is he going to play? The answer is no, he's not because David Irving has more than just a high ankle sprain because as I think one guy called it, it's a long ankle sprain. He's going to be away from the team. The Cowboys are holding out hope he can return, but for the most part, he hasn't been at practice, hasn't been in meetings, hasn't been at the facility, has not been rehabbing. Tough to come back to the NFL when you haven't been doing the things that are required for your job. So the Cowboys holding out hope, but I've given up hope on David Irving, quite frankly. All right, Rife K, who do you think the Cowboys will target in the free agency? A couple different guys that I think make some sense. Earl Thomas is the big one there. But beyond that, I think you're kind of looking more at backup guys. I don't think you'll see a huge splash necessarily because the Cowboys splashes, and I know you guys don't always like this, are going to come internally. It's going to be Demarcus Lawrence. That should count, by the way. We should count re-signing guys. Isn't that the same thing of... I mean, would you rather re-sign to Marcus Lawrence or go out and pay Ziggy Ansah? Makes way more sense. So, extending extension of Amari Cooper, re-signing to Marcus Lawrence, and getting extensions planned out for guys like Byron Jones and Dak and Zeke Elliott down the road. So, Earl Thomas is the big name, but beyond that, I think it would be a little bit more of a quiet option, in large part thanks to that Amari Cooper trade. Jonathan Fortis, hope I said that right, says, should we keep David Irving? He's really young and talented, and we can get him on the cheap. He is young and talented, and he might be too at this point, but at this point, it's not worth the hassle anymore. I am so fed up with him just not being there. It's cheap. He's only like $2.5 million this year, but he's played two games. I don't trust him to be out there. I would rather draft somebody young in a great defensive tackle class and have him develop than re-sign than re David and have him not be on the field at all. Christopher Ray Brown says draft Jay Sternberger, the Texas A&M guy. I think that's a possibility. Now, I think the Cowboys will wait till round three, round four to get a new tight end. It's a good class. Sternberger among them put up great numbers at A&M. The Cowboys tend to prefer blocking tight ends, you know, like a TJ Hawkinson or even some other guys on that list there uh, beyond Jay Sternberger. But he's going to be an option for them, I think. All right, Matt S. Could the Cowboys possibly get two new coordinators in the offseason? Yeah, they could, especially if depending on how you count Chris Richard. He is, I already consider him the D.C. for the Cowboys. Good chance he's back. Good chance he also leaves. Scott Linehan, I hope, is gone. If that's the case, it's definitely going to be a new O.C. for the Cowboys. So depending on how you count Chris Richard right now, there is a possibility there are two new coordinators for the Cowboys. If they end up losing Chris Richard, 
a name to keep an eye out. Jerome Henderson, former Cowboys defensive backs coach who they never wanted to, to leave, left for the Falcons in a very similar role to Chris Richard, minus the play calling. He is the true kind of passing game and defensive backs coach for Atlanta. All right, V Killets for the win says, what position do you think we will rely on for the draft rather than free agency? A couple different ones. I think tight end is one option because they don't want to spend more money there. If you miss on, well, I'm not going to mention safety. I think that offensive line is where they'll go because they want to draft more young people. And then I think in particularly, I think it'll end up being defensive tackle. That's where they're going to go because I don't think they re-signed David Irving. They have guys returning. Malik Collins, Tyron Crawford can place him inside. Uh, Antoine Woods as well. And it's a really strong defensive line class like I mentioned. So at that point, go draft somebody. Go find a good young defensive tackle. In my last mock draft, which you posted on the Cowboys on the Chat Sports main YouTube channel, and it's on my Twitter at What Going Downey, we do have uh, them drafting Gerald Willis out of Miami, Florida. I think that could be a fit there for the Cowboys. All right, James Law, what will our first pick of the second? Who I assume he means who will be our, our first pick of the second round? And then he asked, asked about uh, Noah Fant. So I would love Noah Fant. I would absolutely love it. He is my tight end one because he's immensely talented. I don't see him falling to what's going to be a high 50s pick for the Cowboys. Maybe even, the, sorry, pick number 64. My bad. Speaking it into existence. Pick number 64, I don't, there's just no way he's going to fall there. All right, I'm just going to say Mr. because I can't. I, I'm not even going to try that last name, so I, or the username. I apologize there. How do you feel L. Collins has performed this year, and is it time to draft his replacement? I think that of all the offensive linemen, Lael Collins really benefited the most from the move to Paul Alexander. Remember, when the Cowboys fired that offensive line coach, since then, really since that Titans game, Lael Collins has really improved. And since the Saints game, when he had a bit of a rough showing, the past five games, he's allowed one sack. That was against the Giants. The past five games... Collins has upped his play. I feel better about him going forward for the Cowboys. Now, I still draft someone late to help groom and be a swing tackle in case he leaves in free agency after next year or Tyron's back and neck flare up again. But I don't think you have to go into it drafting a guy right now. You can draft someone to groom a little bit. Henry Noakes is, is that Browns guy. Greg Williams, a possible DC if Richard leaves. I'd say it is, but at this point, I kind of want to find, as weird as it sounds, someone who is a little bit similar to Chris Richard in terms of the scheme and the style because it worked really well this year. And Williams will have interest. I think in the end, Williams makes more sense for a team that has a first-time head coach than it does for a team with someone already in place like Jason Garrett. But if Richard does leave, we'll do some replacement videos. I think he'll be on the list. Danielle, any plans to replace Heath in the offseason? I don't know if it's even a fault replacement because Jeff Heath is still in a league average safety. I always find out it's funny how I feel like the vast majority feel that Jeff Heath's out of the GOAT or he's really, really bad. And they're just, he's just kind of somewhere in the middle. He's a good, I think, more of a number three safety. Watch out for a round two pick. I would love it if Taylor Rapp was there for the Cowboys out of Washington. Not sure he will be. Or they go throw money at Earl Thomas and Xavier Woods kind of plays that strong safety role, that hybrid role of Jeff Heath. All right, Michael Jacks, which on-field matchup are you looking forward to to the most in the game? Good question. I, I, I actually think it's going to be, as weird as it sounds, Linehan versus Wade Phillips, the, the play calling. Because Wade Phillips' schemes are very aggressive. He'll get upfield. The Rams' run defense has not been that good. I want to see some draws. Let those defense linemen get too far upfield Run the, the, the delayed draw to Zeke Elliott. Let your athletic lineman get to the second level. You can bust some big plays. We'll see if Lennon actually has those drawn up. I am hopeful that he does. All right, Daniel Garris, do you think Travis Frederick will play much next year, or will they draft a replacement for him? I think you'll see some interior linemen taken later on, but I do don't think you're going to see them draft a center early. Frederick says that he's close and that he felt feel like he could play right now. Of course, it's too late for that. So I do think you'll see Travis Frederick play. That's typically the case for most of these guys with Gia Beret syndrome. They miss the first their first year or their first couple months, and then by year two, they're pretty much back. So I am hopefully, and I'm rather optimistic, that Travis will be okay 
for next year. A similar question here on the offensive line. Michael Jack, should we re-sign or extend it now or just let it ride out? Well, I am on board with, with extending him. Here's the thing, though. Why would Joe Looney do that? Why would Joe Looney take a discount to be a backup? I think he's proven he can start in, in this NFL, in the NFL, so I think it makes more sense for him to say, you know what? Thanks for the offer, guys. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. I'm going to come in shape again next year and get paid once I hit free agency. All right, destruction one. Is Dak ready? I assume he means for the Rams game. He's a gamer, guys. That's what Dak Prescott is. He is built to play when the game is on the line. So I am not worried about Dak being good to go. I will continue to worry about the starts of the Cowboys, the red zone offense. But if it's close in the fourth quarter, honestly, I really trust Dak Prescott right now because he has done it time and time again. The most fourth quarter comebacks in NFL history through his first three years. All right, Joshua Aravlo, however you say it, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Russ. I'm really bad with names if there's no pronunciation guy in front of me. With Zeke taking up a huge workload, who and when would you want to look for a potential backup or even the next come up halfback? Great question. I'm looking with that comp pick at the end of round four, round five in that range. I do think the Cowboys should draft another running back because Zeke had a huge workload. I would like someone to help relieve that a little bit, especially if you do lose Rod Smith. And the thing I like about the NFL, you can find a halfback in round four, round five, round six. Hell, you can get a friggin' pro bowler as an undrafted free agent in Phil Lindsay who no one saw coming. You can find those guys. Justin Jackson for the Chargers, a seventh round pick. It's not as good of a halfback class as it was last year, but you can find guys. Gus Edwards was great out of Rutgers for the Ravens, was one of my draft crushes. So draft somebody. If I were running an NFL team like the radical that I am, I would absolutely draft a halfback every year, round four, round five, and just churn through them over and over again. All right, film productions. Who will break out this game on the Cowboys? A lot of different options here. Dark Horse, if they actually throw the, the damn ball, uh, Rico gathers, but that's probably not going to end up happening. Uh, maybe Michael Gallup. You can beat Marcus Peters and Aqib Tlaib, so I would say maybe it's a big game for Michael Gallup. Ideally, ends up being the Dak Prescott re-breaker game. Remember what happened the last time he played in L.A. in that preseason game? How about that again? All right, Julian Perez says, should we trade or have Sean Lee retire as a Cowboy? I don't know how much trade value Sean Lee has right now. I really don't. And in the end, beyond getting maybe a mid to late round draft pick back, you save the same amount of money. So from that perspective, if I am the Cowboys, maybe you say, Sean, why don't you retire and come be a coach for us? And that'll be fun. That's kind of what I would go because I also hate the idea of seeing Sean Lee play in another jersey other than a Cowboys jersey. All right, Matt S., do we extend Zeke this offseason? I actually don't think so. I don't think that's the plan for the Cowboys. Demarcus Lawrence, a much bigger priority. Amari Cooper, Byron Jones, Dak Prescott all have their contracts end before Zeke. I get why Zeke wants to have his, his contract redone. He wants to have a Todd Gurley type move, and we know how short NFL halfback lives are. But I don't think you're going to see the Cowboys rush to extend Zeke. It can definitely happen, but I would not be surprised if, it, if it's more of a preseason extension than an offseason extension. All right, Amari in hand. What do we do with Gregory trade or keep he has value? You keep Randy Gregory. There's no reason to trade him. He had a really good year down the stretch. A lot of impact as a pass rusher there. You don't let him walk. Sigfrido Diaz says, how about picking up Mark Ingram this offseason? Well, I think for the Cowboys, it doesn't actually make any sense because how is he going to play? You're going you're gonna to take away touches from Zeke to give it to, to Mark Ingram on an expensive contract. It's a lesser version of the exact same, uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell debate. Why throw money at another halfback? That doesn't make any sense. So I don't think you're going to see them sign Mark Ingram at all. Film Productions. Should we let Beasley walk and get Marlon Humphreys? I'm pretty sure you mean Adam Humphreys, the Bucks slot receiver, who in many ways is a younger version of Cole Beasley. They're very similar builds. Uh, 25 for Adam Humphreys. Cole's approaching 30 now. I, I don't hate the idea in a bubble, but I actually don't like the idea of paying my slot guy $10 million a year like I, I'm pretty sure Adam Humphreys is going to command. So I'll say no on that one, unfortunately. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, 
rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.